morning. My name is Elizabeth. Uh, I, I'm the CEO for Junior Achievement Africa, so I'm only here this week, and I was very fortunate to have been invited by Rihanna to be here, so thank you. Um, so I'm based, uh, we're an organization that works in youth development, economic development, and I'm based in Ghana, and I have oversight for 14 countries. So this is really intriguing to me because, you know, uh, we're, we're often looking to South Africa uh, as a leader, especially in this sector, and looking for lessons and looking for things that we can apply um, pan-Africanly. Um, and one of the things that, amongst many things that jumped out from this really brilliant data that you shared, is this trend for investors to create their own programs, which must be coming from a perception that in, uh, NGOs are inadequate in their implementation, which you talked about. So I'm really um, curious, I think, for that and for everything else, is how do we create convergence? And what are the low-hanging fruit? And what are the levers that we pull so that all of this effort that is happening and all of this money that's being invested in time and resources and energy and all of that, that it really does get to the result that we're all struggling so hard to, to achieve. Thank you, thank you. Um, that, that is a, a beautiful question and I, and I do wanna share with you. 80% of our work over the last 24 months was around customization. <coughs> Do you know what that means? There's not a single NGO involved. Why? Because the investors are so clear about what is the change they want to have. Up until now, they've only had one choice. Put out a call for proposals and hope the penny drops somewhere. They do not have that luxury. So what we're finding to speak to your point is because there's no evidence of impact. The funders are saying then I'm going to create the impact because I can control that process. Then I may outsource the implementation. But it's a completely different discussion again. Because now that they know what they want, they're going to look for those NGOs. Now there's a different due diligence process. Again, coming back to the process. Now we're not looking for, do you have a PBO certificate? No, 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 no. We're now looking, do you have national coverage? How many children per month have you got scale? Now, when I do the PBO certificate, it doesn't tell me whether you can scale, whether you've got a national footprint. It doesn't tell me that you can guarantee that that is the outcome that's going to come out. Why? Because we're so focused on who the board of trustees are. It does not speak to what's going to happen to the children at the end of the process. And so that is exactly to that point. I do not want to just say it is the fault of the NGOs because they're only responsive. They only ask, answer what they get asked. But here's what I think we've missed in this changing space. We haven't actually spoken to each other about what has changed and how the change affects us all. So corporates are just saying, you know what, I now know what I want. I'm going to look for this, and what we're now finding, our corporate clients are saying to us, can you find me the top five in this space? Now there's a different question. Now I check, when last did you do your research? And if you've built a whole NGO around the Department of Statistics, Statistics in 1999, you're irrelevant to me. I don't even look at data older than three years. So how many of you have developed your theories of change and practice in the last three years? If you're an NGO, I can tell you very little because you've got a recipe and you follow this recipe because you can guarantee, you know how many people you need, you know where you need <coughs> them, you, you know what skills you need, you, you know what you're gonna get. So you're perpetuating the same thing. But I, I don't want to make a long discussion. I just want to say to you, you are right. And that is why I'm saying if an NGO today 
is not clear on the value it adds, the difference it makes, its differentiated position, and guess what, it may not even be an NPO. These new social enterprises are running a circles around a traditional NGO. So again, don't worry about your PBO certificate. Worry about the relevance of your solution. That's the point.